Hey, welcome to Jeffersonian Democracy Lecture Part 1. For this one, I'm going to need glasses. This is what we did in class. In case you missed it, I'm going to want to go over it one more time. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Remember the Revolution of 1800? Yes! Peaceful transition of power in the balance? Will the Federalists voluntarily give up power? What's going to happen? Jefferson won the popular vote. There are some problems in New York. The election goes to the House of Representatives. Most people decided Burr was a crazy man, and so they put their support to Thomas Jefferson rather than have a Burr presidency. See uh, the Revolution of 1800 song, Hamilton. Uh, Burr becomes a vice president. That might be significant later. There's a duel. We'll find out what happens. Uh, significance. Jefferson calls it a revolution in the sense that this is the first time a peaceful transition of power from one party to another happens. He calls it a return to the spirit of 1776 and a truly Republican um, re Republican democracy, essentially. Uh, and there was revolutionary in that, like we said, there was a peaceful transition of power. John Adams is our last Federalist president. We also talked about the inconsistent Jefferson. Um, some might argue he's not a particularly effective president, and yet he is a practical politician, he's much more preferring to be the bookish intellectual philosopher. But we did mention how we did not boot out Federalist public servants. He let the Alien and Sedition Acts expire on their own. And um, he did not do away with much of Hamilton's financial plan, even though he tried, and he tried. Uh, he also kept the Bank of the United States, uh, which is going to come into play in the 1820s and 1830s. Stay tuned for Jacksonian democracy. Um, he did not repeal the protective tariff. In fact, he would raise it, even though it does support Hamilton's manufacturing uh, and East Coast interest, as opposed to Jefferson's states' rights and yeoman farmers. But he did repeal the whiskey tax and substantially reduce debt through primarily the sale of Western lands. So the judiciary and John Marshall. It's not like the Supreme Court could matter anytime soon. The Judiciary Act of 1801, it was a last ditch effort by Federalists as they were lo losing the legislative and executive branch to pack the judiciary with uh, federal judges. 16 new judgeships, midnight appointments, and the appointment of John Marshall. John Marshall is a Federalist, and even though he is Jefferson's cousin, he will serve for 34 years on the Supreme Court and establish the federal legacy on the supremacy of the federal government in American legal precedent and tradition, profoundly shaping uh, the Supreme Court uh, and legal precedent for years to come. Let's take a look for much more closely at Marbury v. Madison, which helps John Marshall do this. Midnight Judge William Marbury never received his commission from the new Secretary of State, James Madison, who shelves it on his first day in office. Uh, and Marbury appeals because he says, hey, James Madison is supposed to give that to me under the Judiciary Act of 1789. Marshall says, hey, I'm a Federalist. Marbury, you're a Federalist. You should be on the federal bench. In theory, this case is done and done. However, I can't actually make James Madison give it to you because the law that you're using to cite this precedence, the 1780 Act, the Judiciary Act of 1789, is unconstitutional. And with that, John Marshall gives the Supreme Court sweeping new powers to determine the constitutionality of acts of Congress, otherwise known down at the bottom there as judicial review, except that my face is covering it up. So <sighs> judicial review. Uh, and judicial review is something you're going to need to remember over and over again. Anytime Marbury v. Madison shows up, you should think to yourself, judicial review. What did you think? Judicial review. Because you always knew it was judicial review for Marbury v. Madison. Okay, moving on. Uh, we actually skipped this for just a second to, oh no, actually we, we skipped all of that. That was the end of our Thomas Jefferson uh, and Jeffersonian Democracy Part 1. Stay tuned for Jefferson's Democracy Part 2.